Hello and welcome to the Whirly Bloke channel. My original iFlight Mega B is quite bashed about now and needs some TLC. So today I'll be upgrading it with a DJI ready flight controller and adding the air unit and generally getting it back into shape. Judging by the views and the comments on my review of this iFlight Mega B last year, it's pretty popular. And iFlight were the first to offer a bind and fly cine whoop that could carry a GoPro, and now all the others have followed. iFlight themselves now have a DJI Air Unit version available of this, so I'm going to upgrade this original version rather than just go and buy a whole new quad. So I'll be adding this Sussex D F7 Mini Twin Gyro All-in-One Flight Stack, which is the same one that iFlight use on their latest version. I'll be upgrading the 4-in-1 ESC as well. And I will need to squeeze this air unit down into here somewhere. Looks pretty tight. We may have to put these flat rather than in a stack. And I'll be pimping it up with these multicolour TPU ducts and a new GoPro mount with this protector on it. To be honest, these PLA ones are pretty beaten up and broken now. And I think TPU is a much better option. Along the way, I'm going to need to design and print some bits and pieces to hold the air unit itself in here somewhere. And the antennas at the back. And this is already fitted with a TBS Crossfire. The antenna's mounted nicely on the back there, so I won't need to be changing that. But I'll get the latest Betaflight 4.1 installed on here and get this flying nicely with the RPM filters. Let's get this stripped down. Take the props off. Remove the broken PLA ducts. Carefully disconnect and remove the camera. Unscrew the flight stack, unsolder the ESC and the motor wires, clean the frame with some IPA, and test fit the Sussex flight stack PCBs. There's no room in here for the flight stack and the air unit, so I've split the stack PCBs and soft mounted them on the bottom plate. It just needed some new holes drilling in the carbon. And the interconnect cable that iFlight supply can easily fit underneath the flight controller board and plug into the ESC here. Make sure the flight controller soft mounts aren't caught up on the bottom plate or these standoffs here. And make sure the flight controller is facing forward using the marking on the PCB. Now I've still got to solder the TBS nano receiver which solders onto these four pins here and fathom out how I'm going to mount it. And I was a little bit worried that the motor wires wouldn't quite stretch back down to the ESC board, now it's further back. It's actually fine and I've soldered them all in and put some tape to hold the cables in nice and tidy. Now there's just enough room for the air unit to fix on the top plate. So there's just enough room there between the bottom of the plate and the, the flight controller boards. But I'm going to need some 3D printed parts to mount it in place. And I'll also need something to mount the camera and the antennas at the back here. Here's the iFlight Sussex wiring for the TBS Nano. It's just four wires, power, RX and TX. So I can get it all soldered in place. Cover it in some heat shrink and use some foam tape to hold the receiver down. And I'm using some hot glue to make sure the wires stay put. The Sussex is DJI ready so I just need to plug the interconnect cable in. Then solder the battery wires and a low ESR 470 microfarad 35 volt noise suppression capacitor and use a zip tie to hold everything nice and secure. Now I can start measuring up and design some 3D printed brackets to hold the air unit, the camera and the air unit antennas. I'm using 123D and Simplify 3D 
and I'll leave links in the description where you can download the STL files. Assemble the pretty parts and push some M3 bolts into the air unit brackets. Now you can fix the new camera brackets with the original 2mm bolts. And fit the antennas to the printed antenna tubes and use a 20mm M3 bolt to fix them to the brackets and push them onto the rear standoffs. Drill a couple of M3 holes in the top plate. Bolt the brackets on and fit the air unit. Push the DJI interconnect cable in place, it's keyed so it'll only go in one way round. And connect the antennas up. Push the camera onto the front standoffs and you can use this to adjust the up tilt. And bolt the top plate back into place. And adjust the antennas and tighten up the bracket. Finally, check the fit of a battery strap under the top plate. And check there's no short circuit across the battery terminals. And now for the bit that I've really been waiting for, fitting these awesome new multicolour TPU ducts and GoPro mount. X-Copters have a load of colour options available for these and will even do custom colour combinations at no extra charge. But I really do like this bumblebee look. This optional GoPro lens protector just slides on the front of the GoPro Hero like that and I think it's really worth it. Although it would be great to have a version that allows you to fit an ND filter on here. Now. Installing all this was actually pretty straightforward once I fathomed out where everything was going to go. Although I did take a close look at the iFlight DJI version images on their website for some ideas. And you can see why DJI ready flight controllers make things easy to connect when you've got an interconnect cable that's included. You just plug it all together. I'll leave you with some flight footage. Now, this isn't what you'd normally expect to get on a Cinewhoop review. All that swooping through open car windows and that sort of stuff. I think the ideal use for a Cinewhoop is when you're flying really close around people and you just don't want to freak them out or cause any prop damage to soft tissue or anything that you bump into. This clip is from a commercial showreel I did recently for an electronics company inside their distribution centre using this upgraded Megabee. This is the GoPro footage, but having the DJI digital FPV goggles made this so much easier because I could see everything. Flying close to the staff and all that machinery has got to be as safe as possible. And if you're going to do this, I recommend flying an angle, keep your rates pretty low, use plenty of expo and keep your stick movements as smooth as possible. I'll leave links in the description for all the STL files so you can 3D print your own air unit camera and antenna mounts and I've listed all the components that I used and links so you can find the latest prices. As always, thanks for watching and if you found that useful give me a thumbs up and leave a comment and if it's your first visit then please consider subscribing to the channel and hit the bell to get notified when I post a new video. I'll see you next time and enjoy the video.